This is the Eye on Annapolis Daily News Brief, keeping you informed about the happenings in Annapolis and the area. Local news, local sports, local events, local opinion, and of course, local weather. The Eye on Annapolis Daily News Brief starts now. Good morning. It's Monday, July 22nd, 2019. This is John Fernay, and this is your Eye on Annapolis Daily News Brief. Saturday afternoon at about 5.30, the Anne Arundel County Fire Department responded to 569 Benfield Road in Severna Park for a building fire. On arrival, crews saw heavy smoke coming from the building and immediately called for a second alarm due to the outside temperatures that were approaching 100 degrees. The cause of the fire is still under investigation. There is no damage estimate available, but both businesses sustained significant damage. A total of 65 firefighters responded to the scene, which took about 45 minutes to control. Yesterday afternoon at about 11 a.m., Anne Arundel County police officers from the Northern District responded to the 500 block of Church Street in Brooklyn Park for a report of an individual that was bitten by a neighbor's dog. When police and EMS arrived on the scene, the dog charged the EMTs and paramedics, forcing them to retreat back into their ambulance, and then the dog turned its sights to the Anne Arundel County police officer who discharged his service weapon one time striking the dog. The dog ran back into the house. He was taken to a local veterinary hospital for treatment where he is in stable condition and the injuries are believed to be non-life-threatening. The dog was identified as a male pit bull. He will be taken into custody by Anne Arundel County Animal Control after his medical treatment. The adult male who was bitten by the dog was treated by paramedics at the scene and no officers or paramedics were injured in the incident. Mayor Buckley is on a hiring spree again. He has hired two new individuals to help out in the city. Stephen Rice is going to become the Economic Development Manager under the Department of Planning and Zoning, and Lynn Farrow is going to become the Assistant City Manager. Most recently, Rice was the Director of Community Development for the American Communities Trust, and Farrow should be a familiar name to some people. She worked in the city from 2009 to 2012 as the city's grants coordinator, and she also served as Alderman Dewan Gay's campaign manager for his most recent write-in campaign. Most recently, Farrow was the Vice President for Development and Public Policy for Goodwill Industries of the Chesapeake. Both will start in their new roles on July 25th. Additionally, we understand that the city has purchased a trash truck and hired two individuals to handle public trash, which are the public trash cans you see downtown in Ward 1. Apparently, that was not included with the new residential trash contract that went into effect on July 1st with the new company. So the city has added two more people to the Public Works Department as well as a trash truck to handle the public trash and recycling. Harold Martin, 54, the former NSA contractor who lived in Glen Burnie, who had also stored two decades worth of classified documents in his Glen Burnie home, was sentenced on Friday to nine years in federal prison. It was a plea agreement, and he did admit to guilt of a single count of willful retention of national defense information, and he is going to get credit for the nearly three years he has spent behind bars since his arrest. Prosecutors claimed that he had 50 terabytes of data on a computer. The information spanned from the mid-90s to the present and included personal details of government employees, top-secret email chains, handwritten notes describing NSA's classified computer infrastructure, and descriptions of classified technical operations. Maryland's Governor Larry Hogan says he wants to save Marylanders about $5.6 million a year. Well, that is if you pay tolls. He is proposing some change to the tolls again, some reduction, and his proposal is before the Maryland Transportation Authority's board, who will review that a little bit later on this month. One of the proposals is going to cut toll rates for motorcycles and vehicles towing one axle or two axle trailers, and another is going to allow drivers who are billed by video toll cameras to get discounts by going online to pay the tolls before the invoices are actually mailed. Hopefully that will go through, and thank you, Governor Hogan. Up in Baltimore on Friday night, Daniel Murphy and his wife were approached by four men in an SUV at about 9 p.m. near Patterson Park. The men announced that it was a robbery, they showed a gun, and they fled with a wallet, a purse, cash, and multiple cell phones. Who is Daniel Murphy? Well, He's one of Baltimore's newest deputy police commissioner who was just brought to Baltimore by Commissioner Michael Harrison from New Orleans. Oh, Baltimore, what are we going to do with you? And finally, as we wrap up, Bozuto Group, who is one of the preeminent builders in Anne Arundel County, has announced that they have finished their project called Residences at Monarch in the Walk Chapel Town Center. This project is 246 apartment, and pre-leasing began at the end of May, and already they have a total of 21 leases signed. Yet this, prices start at $1,760 per month for a 610-square-foot one-bedroom apartment. Do the math on that. 
Seems a little bit high to me, but hey, here's what you get. You get wood from Brazil, custom light fixtures from New Zealand, fireplace stone from Italy, wall coverings from France, and the amenities include a pool and a deck, a fitness center, an indoor and outdoor yoga studio, an entertaining lounge with a kitchen, and get this, a pet spa. Are you freaking kidding me? Okay, that is about it for the top news today. Please make sure you're checking out ionanapolis.net throughout the day because we do update it throughout the day. Give us a click on that first link in our show notes. It'll show you all the different ways that you can connect with us. If you are someplace you can give us a rating or a review, please do that as well. It would be much appreciated. Now you need to hang tight. We have George Young coming up with your local DMV weather forecast. He's coming up right after this message from Kegs and Corks. Hey, it's Gina Crash. Join me Saturday, August 17th for the Kegs and Corks Festival at the Anne Arundel County Fairgrounds. Tickets benefit the Special Olympics of Maryland and include a souvenir glass, unlimited wine and beer samples, plus live music by Amish Outlaws, J. Corsi Willis and the Stone Authors, and XPD Band. Enjoy over 80 Maryland wines, 40 craft beers, incredible food, unique arts and crafts, and more. Go now to kegsandcorksfest.com for tickets. Going out? You need the most up-to-date local weather. Here's George Young from DMV Weather in Annapolis with today's forecast. Hey everyone, this is George with DMD Weather, and this is your Eye on Annapolis forecast for Monday, July 22nd. It'll be hot again today for the Annapolis region, following a ridiculously hot weekend across all of Anne Arundel County. But it won't be quite as oppressive, with highs in the 88 to 93 degree range, with the real story for the day being the potential for flash flooding, as a cold front moving through from the west could generate some strong to severe thunderstorms throughout the area, and some rain could continue into Tuesday, which will bring much cooler temps with highs in the 77 to 84 degree range before skies clear for the rest of the week with sunshine and highs in the 80s Wednesday through Friday before upper 80s to maybe low to mid 90s for the weekend with continued sunshine. Okay, that's it for today. This is George Young of DMV Weather. Make it a great day out there and be sure to get our free app on all of your devices by searching for DCMD VA Weather in the Apple or Google App Stores and also follow us on Facebook and Twitter and on our website at dmvweather.com so you can always stay weather informed. You might think a community is defined as people with common interests living in a particular place. Like most of us in Annapolis, we like being near the water and the history of our town. To us at Bay Village Assisted Living and Memory Care, it's more. It's a neighborhood with spacious private residences, fresh dining options, an art studio, theater, and more. All overlooking three acres of expansive outdoor spaces right here in Annapolis. And 24-hour care, safe and secure for the ones we love. Our new $30 million community is also environmentally responsible with LEED Gold Certification and a focus on forest conservation. We invite you to visit our sales center on Bay Village Drive across from Giant at our open house Thursday, July 24th and Friday, July 25th from 11 a.m. to 6 p.m. Bay Village Assisted Living and Memory Care, a community designed with Annapolis in mind. Learn more at bayvillageassistedliving.com. You've been listening to the Eye on Annapolis Daily News Brief. Tell your friends and colleagues this is the podcast where you can keep up on the latest with what's going on in Annapolis. And also tell them about our website, ionanapolis.net, where you can find even more information. This podcast comes to you every Monday through Friday at 7 a.m., keeping you informed with the Eye on Annapolis Daily News Brief. And take a moment to listen to our other podcast, The Maryland Crabs, released every Thursday at noon.